Star Wars, nothing but Star Wars, those crazy Star Wars, don't let them in. Sit back, have a hot buttered rum, and let it happen. Galaxy's Edge is now open at both Disneyland and Walt Disney World. And I got down to the Walt Disney World one pretty much the week it opened, actually. We went to Oga's Cantina. The Cantina. They don't have the Moss Eisley Cantina. They got the Oga's Cantina. I, I think they did a phenomenal job with it. Highly presentational cocktails. And Dag Nabbit, I thought it'd be really great to recreate a few of them here today. So we're gonna do everything we can to recreate some of these drinks from Oga's Cantina. So the drinks I'm gonna to make today are the Fuzzy Tauntaun, the Bespin Fizz, the Dagobah Slug Slinger, and the Carbon Freeze. The Carbon Freeze is a non-alcoholic drink, so that'll be the last one. Stick around if that's what you're into. I wanna kick it off with probably the wildest drink, which is the Fuzzy Tauntaun. I don't have exact recipes. Disney's not giving those out but I do have a list of ingredients. And it says here that this is peach vodka, peach schnapps, simply orange with tangerine, some cane sugar, and the buzz button foam. And the first thing we need to do is make this buzz button foam. You're gonna need these little flowers, sometimes called Szechuan blossoms, also called buzz buttons, also called toothache blossoms. They cause a numb and tingling sensation in the mouth. We're gonna need these to make a foam that sits on top of the drink. I have been futzing around with this for a couple of days, so I am really hoping that this works as it did the other day. This is the container for my immersion blender, so that's what I'm gonna build this in. I need to add 200 grams of peach vodka. Now I wanna add 20 buzz buttons, so a ratio of a buzz button for every 10 grams. I tried it with 10 buzz buttons, and I didn't think that the flavor was intense enough. Um, there is definitely some disagreement amongst the how to drink staff about how intense that foam was. We've all been there independently now, it seems. I thought it was really intense, so. We now have to get this infused with this buzz button stuff, and there's a couple ways we could do about, go about that. For me, I'm gonna go with an immersion blender for starters. We're gonna just try to really dice these suckers up, give them as much surface area to the liquid as humanly possible. We're going to do a rapid infusion process here in our icy whipper. Put that on there. We go three chargers. Shaking it each time. Now the trick to this, says Dave Arnold, is that we want to very rapidly off gas it. They do make special kits for that. I just don't have one. My trick is I put this over here and this over there because at some point liquid's going to come flying out of this and we want to catch all of that. So this is my system for doing that. Open the valve all the way and hold it open. The next part of this, I need actually a big bowl. What would be even better than this would be like a large rectangular basin like you use in food prep or sous vide. I don't have one, but this will do it. This will work. We're gonna dump this into the bowl and strain it. And you put, notice I put it back on my kitchen scale and I set it to zero grams. And I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna press these. Yeah, look at that, there's a lot of juice in there. We wanna make sure we get as much of that as possible. So the next thing I'm gonna do is zero that out again. And what I've got is some soy lecithin. You can buy this online. I'm gonna provide an affiliate link in the pinned comment below. This is a soy-based foaming agent, binding agent, emulsifier. And in our case, it's gonna help us make this foam. I'm gonna add two grams to my 200 grams. So one gram per 100. And we're done with the scale now. Now I played around making foams a bunch. You can make a foam in that Icy Whipper, but it's actually not the style of foam that I saw at Ogus Cantina or that I see in photos of drinks from Ogus Cantina. So I don't think that's how they did it. I think they do it with an immersion blender or something like that. And the reason I said at a bigger basin would be better is because if their foam passes back through the blades of your immersion blender, it won't propagate. You wanna give it room to escape the blades once it's been frothed up. Let's give it a taste. You see there's our foam, nice and stable. 
we can put that right on top of something. See, it's holding together pretty well. That's about what we're going for consistency wise. Definitely working. Definitely making your mouth tingle. It's a little bit like sticking your tongue to a nine volt battery. Okay, so the rest of this drink is gonna be shaken. One and a half ounces of this peach vodka from Smirnoff. I want a half an ounce of peach schnapps. Snap, 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 snap. I don't know why that made sense in my mind. And I want three ounces of orange tangerine blend. We're gonna shake that up and we're gonna strain it into this special glass. One big cube, one cracked cube. Strain that into the glass. We're gonna garnish that with actually a lot of our foam. And there we have the fuzzy tauntaun from Ogos Cantina. I think I freaking nailed it, at least in the looks department. Yep. Look, I'm not gonna lie, it's a fuzzy navel with mouth tingling foam on top. It's good, this is a good drink. It's very easy to drink. It's orange and peach. It's orange and peach. I don't, I, there's not a whole lot of complexity to it, except for that foam on the top. Is it all over my mustache? I think it's actually a pretty smart choice to do this foam drink with a pretty simple drink underneath it because the foam is so intense and it's such an experiential thing. And I'm coming to describing that. It is like electrifying your mouth. Everything is tingling. It's not hot, it's not spicy, it's unique. I would say it's like it makes it numb, but it, it doesn't really make it numb. It's extremely hard to describe. It does not have any kind of analog in anything else in cuisine that I can think of, honestly. Maybe it's like the mintiest mint that ever minted, but it's not like mint at all either, so. And it looks great too. I mean, when you get that right glass, it looks real sci-fi. These glasses, by the way, I'm gonna let you know, Disney didn't make them. They are hard to find though. I'm pretty sure Disney bought every single set of these glasses on earth. I, I'm fairly certain I got the last six available for sale on, on eBay in North America. Okay, so the next drink I'm gonna make is a Bespin Fizz. Ingredient list calls her yuzu puree. Full disclosure, I was unable to secure any yuzu. Yuzu is an Asian citrus, I don't got any. We're gonna simulate it by using a mixture of grapefruit and orange today. I hope I get pretty close. Like I said, I, I'm doing my absolute best here and I don't know the actual ratios that they used. I have to experiment and guess and I'm also, I, I, I'm going by memory because in my notes that I took when I was there, I was not, I'm not able to sample the drinks from Oga's Cantina every day unfortunately. There is one piece of very specialized equipment you will need to exactly recreate the experience of a Best Spin Fizz, and that is a Jet Chill. I have a Jet Chill Mini here. These are built for theme park use for like Las Vegas bars. They're built by the Jet Chill company. Um, they're pricey for individuals to buy. I didn't buy this one. I reached out to the owners on Instagram and told them what I was doing, and they said, absolutely, we'll lend you a machine. This plus this glass is going to allow us to build a puck of dry ice in the bottom of this glass that will cause our drink to safely continuously bubble for the duration of its enjoyment by the patron. In this case, me. I'm gonna start by adding my citrus juices to this drink. I wanna add three quarters of an ounce of grapefruit juice. And a quarter ounce of orange juice. I want a half an ounce of pomegranate juice. I want a quarter ounce of cranberry juice. Very little, this is extremely tart cranberry juice. It's very pure. <laughs> I want a half an ounce of simple syrup and two ounces of Bacardi Superior, which for whatever reason was only available to me in this enormous 1.75 handle. Now we're gonna add some edible luster dust to this. This is used by bakers and such, usually for making fancy looking icings. Uh, we're gonna put a little bit into this drink to help it have a really exciting effect when we put it on the jet chill. Shake this up, one big, as I always do, and one cracked. Aggressively shake this. I don't know why I said aggressively, just shake it regularly. Set that aside for just a moment while we prep our jet chill glass. It's really simple to use. You just slide this on. There's a little nipple that fits into the bottom of the glass, and then we just hold this down. They say for about 12 seconds, but you can see when you've got a good puck of dry ice in there. There we have 
Jet Chill glass is set to go. Strain our drink right on top there. Make sure that we leave about two to three inches on top here for a cloud to propagate. That's important. I'd say we did it. So some tasting notes on this Bestman Fizz. Nice. It is a fruity citrus explosion. I mean, it's like fruit punch. <laughs> so it tastes like, it's like a fruit punch drink with alcohol. I wouldn't say it has a very subtle or complex flavor, to be perfectly honest, and I don't know that it was intended to. It's not like a challenging, uh, fancy pants to drink, you know? Uh, the next drink I'm gonna make is a Dagobah Slug Slinger. That was actually my favorite drink I had, one I would definitely recommend new order. I'm gonna start with a half an ounce of ginger syrup. You've seen me make this on the show a few times. This, this is nothing more than simple syrup that's been infused with ginger. I happened to use the ISI rapid infuser on this one because I had it and I wanted to try it out. I never did it before, and it came out great. It worked really good. This is like, guys, gonna be kind of annoying. Shut up, you. You're just gonna yell over me the entire time? Like, I'm doing a show here. That's just great. Getting upstaged by a drink. Find the star. I'll just see about this. I want two dashes of grapefruit bitters. I'm using Bitter Truth grapefruit bitters. It's a hearty dash. Ooh. I want one ounce of lime juice. Mm. Hey. It was a drive by fruiting. I want one ounce of blue curacao. And I want two ounces of Herradura. I don't know, I don't know how you pronounce that. It gotta be Herradura. Herradura. I want two ounces of Herradura uh, Reposado tequila. This is kind of a margarita. In case you didn't notice. And then I'm gonna shake it. One, and two. Whoa. I don't remember being that blue. I am working from an ingredient list that's not entirely specific. So, we dumped that. I now understand it can't be made with lime juice. This is probably using the same orange and tangerine mix that they used in the fuzzy tauntaun. That's gonna change this a little bit. So I'll start over. It's gonna be half an ounce of ginger syrup, two dashes of grapefruit bitters, one ounce of our orange tangerine blend, I'm gonna go three quarters of an ounce now on the blue curacao and getting the balance of blue to orange right is gonna be what makes this thing green. And two ounces of this Herradura Revisado tequila. One large cube, the other one we will shatter. I've seen photos of it served in something more like this glass, but when I had it, it was served in a sifter. I've also seen photos of it served that way, so I don't know if Disney's got different policies at different parks. And then it was garnished when I had it with a sprig of fresh rosemary. I'll we'll set that right in the glass. And there we have the Dagobah Slug Slinger. I love it. That is exactly like I remember it. That's perfect. This is a nice green <laughs> margarita. It is very enjoyable. The rosemary garnish actually really opens up your olfactory. That's a powerful garnish when you got that right by your nose. That is a wonderful thing. The citrus comes through, doesn't overpower, not too sweet. It is on the sweet end for a margarita for my tastes. But then again, it is being served at a theme park. The ginger adds just a little bit of bite to it that wouldn't be there otherwise. I like this a lot. So this final drink is gonna be non-alcoholic. This is called our Carbon Freeze. It is served on a Jet Chill glass. Their ingredients listed as being Powerade Lemon, Lime, and Wild Strawberry, Blueberry and Green Apple Popping Cocktail Pearls. There's not much to this drink. It's Powerade, it's non-alcoholic, but it's really cool looking. And the pearls are really something neat, and I have a whole bunch of them here. Now you can buy these pre-made, and I'm gonna provide a little affiliate link in the pinned comment below, but you can also make these, and you can make them with any flavor you want. There's an affiliate link down there too to the kit that you'll need to do that. It's a really neat process used in a lot of molecular gastronomy to basically encapsulate flavors into what is called caviar. They're neat, you can pick them up and throw them in your mouth. Delicious, mmm, green apple. First thing we wanna do for this drink, 
We're gonna put our jet chill puck into the into the bottom of our glass. The glass is ready. Then we want to put in some of our our pearls. A healthy amount is fine. Then we want to add our two Powerades. Now I was unable to get strawberry Powerade. As a matter of fact, I, I was feeling. It's one of those products that doesn't really exist on the market. In the food service industry, Disney might have access to it. I did get the lemon, the lemon lime Powerade, and then I made some strawberry Powerade. And I'm just gonna put them on here, roughly equal parts, but mostly lemon lime, because that's more like what the picture looks like. It's a, it's a little aggressive. <laughs> it's really going, man, that's, whoa. And so there we have the carbon freeze with the popping bubbles dancing around in there. It's pretty wild, right? I better take a sip off of this before it like, jumps out of the glass. Wow! That is sweet. I haven't had Powerade uh, since I was about 13 years old. I forgot what that tastes like. Obviously, if you could do this at home, your kids would flip. You can do some stuff with dry ice safely at home. What you can do is you can get a tea ball and pack it into that if you have some pellets that you wanna play with and put that at the bottom of the glass. That makes it fairly safe. I can't super encourage you to just dump dry ice into drinks and tell you that that'll be safe. Of course, people do do that, and they're all, for the mo most of them are, are just fine, but some people do get hurt by that, and I, I can't in good conscience tell you that that's a good thing to do. Well, so there we did it. I've recreated four drinks from Oga's Cantina, Dagobah Slug Slinger, Bespin Fizz, the Fuzzy Tauntaun, and the Carbon Freeze, non-alcoholic drink. This is it. I, I think we, we nailed it. I'm very pleased. And if this does well, if you guys like this, I can definitely revisit more drinks from Oga's Cantina down the road. I don't know how soon, though, because this was a tough one to pull off. There was a lot of moving parts on this episode, guys. I did just read an article that said that Big changes are coming to Oga's Cantina in 2020 because Disney's not happy with the way things are going down there. Like, if I had any sway over the Disney company, I would just beg you, please don't change it. It was so great. It was just perfect. Galaxy's Edge was like a religious experience for me. It was amazing. Getting to be the engineer on the Millennium Falcon, doing all the stuff. You're busy. It's like you're really busy doing stuff. It's like a full-on simulator. My kid did not love being a pilot. She was, it was too much pressure for a three-year-old. She felt like she did a bad job. That was rough. I had to talk her down off of that one. She liked being the gunner, which I have to think about, actually. My barware is provided courtesy of Barfly Mixology Gear. If you want any of the tools I'm using on the show, there's a link in the pinned comment down below. The Jet Chill comes from Jet Chill Systems. If you want one of those, you should go to their website. I'll put a link down there. They are not cheap. They're kind of for institutions to use. Remember, I, I really was psyched. I thought I was going to get to keep this one, but they want to get it back, so... All right, I'll send it back. My watches are provided courtesy of my good friends at Crown and Caliber. If you're interested at all in watches, take a look at the link in the pinned comment below. You should definitely swing by Crown and Caliber. I'm on Instagram at How to Drink. I'm on Twitter at How to Drink. I'm on Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink. My Twitch is twitch.tv slash Greg from HTD. You're looking at the guy who made the Kessel Run in 6.21 parsecs. 6.21? What was the number? That number is wrong. <laughs> The look on Bernard's face just now when he said, that number's wrong. <laughs> I have been judged. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you very soon. May the force be with you, and also with you. Does that have, that's, that's, that's Catholicism that you say that, right? Yeah, that's not the force. Oh, geez. I turned it back on.